quick rundown of the opening track from the new Norma Jean album. Uh, the song is called 1994. The album is called Death Rattle Sing For Me. It just came out a few days ago. Just thought I'd uh, jump through some of the tracks and um, some of the sounds you hear at the beginning and talk about how they came together and maybe just a little bit of story behind the song. So I'll kind of go through the sounds, talk about them a bit, and then um, we'll play how it all came together at the end. So the first sound that you hear, people think it sounds like a radio, so it's actually... Uh, a, a cassette tape uh, from a four track that I had back in the early 2000s and I had recorded just some synthesizer sounds on it um, so I put that tape into uh, a tape player and I kind of messed with the pause button kind of pushing it down and letting it up to kind of make the tape stop and start um, and it sounds like this <laughs> and kind of hear like it's you know I kind of stop and start it and then at some point I just let off and I let it play um, but then it, it cuts out um, as some of the other sounds come in. The second sound that you hear is from maybe it was YouTube somebody recorded the sound of fish um, they said they're singing <laughs> in a reef um, it doesn't you know obviously sound like what we would consider singing <laughs> but it just had an interesting sound to it and so I sort of layered it in here but also use some of the sounds to kind of add to that tape effect, like a tape is stopping and starting. Um, so that sounds like this. You can kind of see where I chopped it up. And this runs pretty much the entirety of the intro sample uh, until the music kind of kicks in. Um, the next set of sounds that you hear the sort of guitar sounds that you hear uh, are taken from, they're actually taken from the song Spearmint Revolt. Um, when we were writing that song, the, the working title was Canadian Radio. And so I had some of the guitar tracks from that, and I, I'll kind of play what, what I had, uh, what I started with, and that is this. So when, when we originally wrote uh, Spearmint Revolt, it had a, a quite a longer kind of bridge section that we ended up carving down, uh, making shorter. Um, but it had these cool guitars, which you can't hear in the final version, um, but they kind of looped here for, for quite a while. So what I did is I took a few of those and I kind of chopped them up and, and sped them up and pitched them as well. So if you kind of come to the, to the original sound here, you can kind of see, um, you know, if I play this sound and kind of turn off the warping, and then also turn it down, you get sort of closer, but you can, you can kind of play with, with uh, the pitch and, and the timing of it. So that's really all how that all came together uh, for both of those sounds. I just just messing with the, the warping and, and the pitch of it. Um, the other sound you hear is, I, I found it in the Library of Congress, a really old recording of a song called Give a Man a Horse He Can Ride, which sounds funny, and I'll, I'll kind of play it for you here. <laughs> Sounds and funny, and um, but you know this song is just about you know get, uh, people need something to do with themselves, something to invest their time in, um, to feel kind of happy and productive, and that's really what 1994 is about. Kind of tried to pinpoint a year that felt like when did we really decide that music was the thing we wanted to do, you know, playing and recording music is what we wanted to do with our lives. And 1994 was a pretty good pinpoint year. Some of the other guys were quite a bit younger than Corey and I <laughs> in 94, but um, still it felt like it was just a really important time in our lives. Um, but you can see the section that I used is a little bit later in the song. So there's this flute and this harp um, going there. So I basically uh, kind of chopped that up 
and made a bit of a loop out of it to make it do this. And then um, kind of the final main sound that you hear is was also taken from Spearmint Revolt, that bridge section when it was uh, when it was quite a bit longer. Um, and it's just Corey's vocals um, with just a ton of effects on them. But I also pitched it up. Uh, here's what it sounds like on, on the record. Um, but if you take this sample and you uh, unwarp it and also slow it back down. It's the line where he's saying I traded uh, for you. And then uh, the final sound is actually the from the actual recording of uh, 1994, which we did live. You can just hear us in the room <laughs> talking, and then you hear you know, Grayson start the riff. Um, I'll play that. Hey, Grayson. Uh, yeah. Do you have earplugs? Uh -huh. I'm staying here anyway. Fuck it. Don't uh, do it, man. Don't do that side of the room. Uh, I'm not a child, man. I don't want to hear him say that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. So you you know what you're hearing is we're all in the room together, um, and Jimmy is in there. Jimmy is Norma Jean's uh, right hand man, tour manager, helper, just best friend to the band, um, and he's in the room. And it's really loud in there, and we're wearing earplugs, and we we didn't have a pair, and so uh, he's just saying I'm not going to wear any. And you hear Jeremy, uh, the producer, saying, "Man, you might want to put some on because you might have kids one day, and you're really going to want to hear when they talk to you." And then we all just start laughing at the thought of. Uh, Jimmy having kids and uh, you know Jimmy says man that was heavy <laughs> talking about what Jeremy said to him um, and then the song starts so that is pretty much all the sounds um, I believe and this is how it all came uh, together when it was done <laughs> Thank you.